nobody wants to talk about how pretty privilege can actually affect your life in a negative way. I first wanted to say this video is not saying to feel bad for people that are conventionally attractive. I just want to let people be aware that pretty privilege affects people's lives in different ways. And it's not always positive, so yeah. For one, girls that benefit from pretty privilege, sometimes guys don't even take you seriously. If you are one of those girls and that does happen to you, you just kind of have to deal with it. You just kind of have to realize, like, okay, this guy's really into me, but, like, he might have a girlfriend. He might just, like, want to hook up with me. I don't know. You never know. Another thing is girls seeing you as competition. Sometimes a girl will front as her your friend, but literally she has the worst intentions for you and she secretly wants to see you fail. And I talked about this before, but feeling lonely and just being excluded from things. So yeah, pretty privilege is a privilege, but just keep in mind that not all pretty girls have it all together or have the perfect life because they're pretty. And of course, underneath this video, someone commented, I think the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks, which I mean, I don't blame them because that's what most people would think. But the universe is balanced, babe, because the bigger the pros, the bigger the cons. So here I am to debunk this comment by telling you exactly why it's so much deeper than just men wanting to sleep with you and jealous female friends. Disclaimer, I understand that the girl in the video, Ali Carter, had only a few seconds to get her point across and I think she did a great job with the limited amount of time she had but I wanted to take this opportunity to expand on what she said. Exactly because some people might watch her video and have the same exact reaction as our friend in the comment section. So what? Men want to sleep with you and women are jealous of you. Big deal. I can think of much worse things. Sounds like the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks. It's almost as though people with pretty privilege are ungrateful or complaining for the sake of attention. But it's a bit deeper than that. So I'm glad Ali prefaced her video by saying that it wasn't about getting people to feel sorry for those with pretty privilege. My video isn't about that either. It's more about giving people a more balanced view of the world and to show that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Another disclaimer. While I will admit that I've experienced some of the perks and drawbacks of pretty privilege and while I know I'm not ugly, I do not think I'm one of the most beautiful people in the world, nor do I think I'm just so gorgeous and oh my god, poor me, look at what I've had to suffer. Again, this video is not about garnering pity or attention. I just want to show a different perspective and my own experience with pretty privilege, which I believe exists on a spectrum. So again, whilst I've had a taste of pretty privilege, maybe my experience has been a four or five on the scale of one to ten. With that out of the way, let's begin with why the drawbacks of pretty privilege run deeper than just horny men and jealous women. The main issue is that you're not taken seriously and this can cause some serious implications in different areas of your life. Areas that are crucial to your overall happiness and well-being such as love, career and friendships. For instance, in terms of relationships, if you're not taken seriously by men, because they just want to sleep with you, how will you find love? It would be more difficult to find and build a steady, stable relationship or even start a family. The guys you'd actually want to date won't even approach you because they have it in their heads that attractive women are not wifey material or maybe they don't approach you because they feel like you're out of their league. The men who do approach you are mostly the men looking for a fun time. And while the attention might be nice after a bit, it starts to feel degrading because you know that you are and deserve more than a fun time or a vacation fling. David Hammond explains my point and shows us a male point of view as to why most men think attractive women are not wifey material and his video do not date attractive women. I think he makes a couple good points, but it's important to note that this is also a generalization. And in fact, in Chris Williamson's video, a look into the psychology of the most attractive women, he asks Alex date psych if attractive women are extra promiscuous. Alex responds saying that the research actually shows the opposite with attractive women having the lowest body count. Now, if you're not taken seriously by women, on the other hand, it's very hard for you to find a sense of belonging. We talk a lot about finding your tribe and how quality relationships are what determines overall wellness and even lifespan. So needless to say, good friends are important, but what happens when women judge you before they even get to know you? 
And what about the fact that you're only invited out when attracting the opposite sex is required? I mean, that's literally how we get clubbing friends. You know, the group of girls we always go out dancing and drinking with, but never seem to see during the day. What's even worse is when you realize that a friend wasn't a real friend, that they only stuck around for the benefits of being friends with you. Last but not least, if you're not taken seriously at work, how will you bring in a consistent income or build a stable career? People seem to think you were probably hired for your looks and therefore you must be stupid because God forbid you're blessed with good looks and the brains to go with them. And so this creates quite a bit of drama in the workplace, which means you might have to change jobs often because you're getting hit on by male colleagues or worse still, your manager. So now it's awkward, but then you're also getting bullied by female colleagues at work. So you see, pretty privilege does come with its fair share of drawbacks despite its advantages. However, I think what ultimately makes something a privilege is whether or not you know how to make it work for you. You can make even the worst things a privilege if you change the way you look at it. For example, I grew up in a dysfunctional family and we were very poor and sure at the time when it was happening, it was not fun. And for a long time afterwards, I was very ashamed of my past, but I now see that as a privilege because it's made me who I am today. Anyway, let's get into the psychology of it and try to understand why women hate attractive women. Firstly, it's not our fault, but we're just built differently from men. And the fact of the matter is, female friendships just don't do well with competition. I think most women would prefer zero competition amongst friends, myself included. Like, if I even feel as though there's any unnecessary competition coming from a girlfriend, I literally recoil emotionally from this person and I make a mental note to be aware of them. Luckily, this doesn't happen very often, but there's just something about competition between female friends that just doesn't feel right. Unlike men who are more direct with each other in comparison. Men even bond while competing with one another, which is why they like playing football or paddle or fill in the gap with your favorite sport. And to be honest, the competition doesn't even look friendly sometimes. Men could be full on aggressive towards one another during a match, but once it's over, they're back to being best friends. Male friendships also recover from fights better than female friendships do. In fact, a guy friend once told me that this is sometimes how male friendships are formed, which was bewildering to me because in girl world, someone could say something and that thing could be what ends a 10-year friendship which I'm sure is equally bewildering to a guy. But this brings me to my next point about female friendships, and that is the fact that there's a lot happening underneath the surface. There's a lot that's unsaid, a lot that's covert, and therefore so is the aggression. Because if a man is the yang, then a woman is the ying. Masculinity tends to extend, reach out, move forward, whereas femininity tends to withdraw, take in, internalize, which explains why men are more physical about things whilst women are more psychological. A simple example is how men want to solve a problem, but women want to talk about the problem. So it makes sense that fighting between women could also be covert and hidden. This type of aggression is called relational aggression, and relational aggression is very subtle. It's social exclusion, spreading gossip, the silent treatment, covert bullying, and the form of backhander compliments or jokes that don't really seem like jokes. Jokes that are really just sneaky insults. We see relational aggression in the form of covert bullying and conditional friendships as well. Did I say covert bullying? Simply put, it's very sneaky, behind your back type of behavior, and men will often dismiss this type of behavior, calling it girl drama. Maybe because it doesn't leave scars and casualties with broken bones, but it isn't any less damaging. The impacts of relational aggression are depression, loneliness, low self-esteem, low self-worth, anxiety, just to name a few. Relational aggression is also something that doesn't always disappear with age. Some women use these tactics throughout their entire lives, especially when it comes to intrasexual competition, which is just a fancy way of describing competition between the same sex for a potential mate. But relational aggression is also used by certain women against other women when it comes to career opportunities and anything where they feel threatened 
by this woman. And that is why a lot of the times most women will hate attractive women because they feel threatened. So now that we understand where the hostility and jealousy from women come from, let's try to understand the psychology of men when it comes to attractive women. Why is it that they don't take attractive women as seriously? Why do they seem to see them as a fun time and assume they have a higher than average body count? Maybe because that's what men would do if they were an attractive female. But I think it's also because men equate attractive faces with sexual openness because while a man is looking at the large hips, the beautiful skin, the voluminous hair and all that, the caveman in them is actually looking at these physical traits as signals of health and well-being. A healthy woman means that he will most likely get healthy children. So in their heads, healthy equals attractive, which equals ready to mate, which is why they tend to see attractive women as being more sexually open. Obviously, this has nothing to do with whether a woman is sexually open or not. Secondly, attractive women tend to struggle with men because of the Madonna whore complex. When a man has Madonna whore complex, he is unable to sustain a feeling of sexual arousal towards his partner because he sees women as either saintly Madonnas or debased whores. Sigmund Freud first identified the psychological complex. He said, where such men love, they have no desire, and where they desire, they cannot love. I think the Madonna whore complex exists on a spectrum as with everything else in life, and I think all men have it a little bit. Men on the lower end of the Madonna whore spectrum are the ones who categorize women as either a fun time, i.e. the whore, or wifey material, i.e. the Madonna. But because they are on the lower end of the spectrum, they can still sustain arousal towards a long-term partner. It's just that maybe they tend to categorize women when they first meet them and are unable to see the same fun time girl as wifey material. So to conclude, a mild case of Madonna Hall complex coupled with the assumption that attractive women are more sexually open is why men don't take attractive women as seriously. And this, besties, is why women hate you and why men just want to sleep with you. The fact of the matter is, assumptions and stereotypes will prevail. It isn't our job to educate people, so what can we do instead? What we can do is learn the rules, then change the game. And to change this game, it's essential that you understand that you are the one who controls people's perception of you, and that this is dependent on the way you present yourself. You teach people how you want to be treated, and you set that bar from the get-go. Which brings me to how sexy is hurting your image. I'm going to ask a couple of rhetorical questions that might sound condescending, and I really do apologize in advance, but hopefully I managed to get my point across with these questions, so let's begin. Do you think that presenting yourself in a sexy way is going to increase or decrease the amount of aggression you receive from women? Question number two, do you think being sexy will encourage or discourage men from seeing you as wifey material. Question number three, will more makeup make you look more approachable or less? I ask these questions because yes, I know that the world shouldn't be this way. People should be better than that and not judge a girl just because she likes makeup. Men should not be judging a woman just because she likes to show off her figure because it makes her feel good. Women shouldn't be so hostile and jealous just because they feel threatened by another attractive woman. But that's not the way the world works, and lying to ourselves, being idealistic, or going against the current, is just going to make our lives more difficult, and that's not what we want. Let me clarify by saying that when I use the word sexy, I'm referring to Emily Ratajkowski and Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines music video, or Emily Ratajkowski in general, because if you go on her Instagram, I'd say a lot of the content is very PG-13 or even R-rated. When I use the word sexy, I'm referring to Miley Cyrus during her foam finger era, um, strangely also with Robin Thicke. When I use the word sexy, I'm talking about Christina Aguilera and her arseless chaps. So let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with sexy. All I'm trying to say is, ask yourself, what is the image that you want to portray to the world? And is that image going to benefit you in the long run? Because the hard truth is that first impressions tend to stick and can stay with people for a very long time, even if they're wrong. 
And I have first-hand experience because I used to present myself in a very sexy way. I don't know if I presented myself that way because I felt it was empowering or because I wanted to hide my insecurities. Maybe it was both, but what I do know is that sexy is usually a phase. And it's no coincidence that all the celebrities I mentioned above were between the age of 18 and 25 during their sexy phase. I know it's unfair that society often makes us feel like it's either or. Either we're a good girl or a bad girl, a fun time or wifey material, trad wife or sexually liberated feminist. Speaking of which, I think it's hilarious we created the sexually liberated feminist to break out of the trad wife archetype only to find that the sexually liberated feminist is still a misogynistic archetype. Because who benefits from OnlyFans and the normalization of hookup culture? Misogynistic men. I watched an interview with Brooke Shields when she was on the Drew Barrymore show and she said something that really stuck with me. She said, it was about these males needing me to be in a certain category to serve their story. It was never about me. And you, my friend, you are not just a supporting character or a prop in someone else's story whose only purpose is to serve their story. This is why I hate the overly simplistic black and white narratives that you see scattered throughout society these days. It limits an otherwise dynamic individual. What if we're both the good girl and the bad girl, the trad wife and the sexually liberated feminist? What if we're all these things? <gasps> Shocking. What if it's more about adapting to the occasion? In which case we could say it's actually about being classy. And I choose this word because class is timeless and is suitable on all occasions. My partner once told me that being classy for him is about being appropriate, dressing for the occasion and making the people around you feel comfortable. And this is why other women want classy women as their friends. This is why classy women are the women men want as their girlfriends or wives. Being classy doesn't mean you can't be sexy. And in fact, classy women can be sexy, but not all sexy women can be classy. So around the age of 25, something in me just clicked. I don't know why. Maybe my prefrontal cortex finally matured, or maybe because I felt so lost in my early 20s and was sick and tired of feeling that way, but something changed and through conversations with friends i've noticed that 25 more often than not is a turning point for many people so around this age i decided i needed a change and one of the ways i started implementing this change was by presenting myself in a more classy way which has helped me make more female friendships and attract the man i am with now who is such a gentleman and holds himself to the same high standards. Learning to be classy has also helped me become more approachable and this has allowed me to meet amazing people who might have otherwise felt we were too different. So are you ready to attract your tribe? Here are some tips on how to become a classy woman mentally because all change first starts from within. Number one is to be disciplined. The moment you exercise self-control and hold yourself to high standards is the moment people start respecting you because they see that you respect yourself. Number two is to be appropriate in the way you carry yourself in general. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say it. If you're invited to a wedding, don't wear white. Don't try to outshine the bride. Being appropriate has a lot to do with reading social cues and having a high EQ. Number three is to be kind. Remember that being classy is also about making others feel good, comfortable and valued. A classy woman doesn't need to be the center of attention all the time and treats everyone equally, regardless of socioeconomic background. And finally, a classy woman follows this motto, low key, low drama, high vibes. I think this one is self-explanatory. Now, when it comes to being classy in terms of fashion, my only advice would be to remember that it's sexier to leave them guessing. Try not to show both legs and cleavage at the same time, unless you're on the beach in a bikini sipping dirty martinis.